We have two masterminds of coaches here trying to tweak the scout just a little bit to alter things, and it's going to set up an excitement for this championship round. So glad you could join us this afternoon. The ACC is the first of the championships to be held around the country and finish up. Laura Jansen trying to work that ball from the outside. Keep an eye on Amy McDonough, 14, and Noah Boderman. Whoa. And that was almost very similar to the shot that was taken that uh, Virginia used to kind of slide in and score to come back in that uh, semifinal win. Tar Heels with the ball, trying to be patient. UVA not looking to overplay. And while the Tar Heels have the ball, Suzanne, some of your uh, blueprints for the Tar Heels this afternoon. Yeah, you know, defensive organization, staying organized is mission critical to UNC's style of play. They are super, super speedy and can frustrate opponents very easily with their stifling press. Nearly a costly turnover by the Tar Heels. Amy McDonough couldn't hold on. Adele Akabuchi, who had the game winner for UVA. Ball quickly goes back. Here's Matson running the spine of the field. And another key for UNC is their speedy outletting. You saw it right there. That's what makes their counterattack so ferocious and successful. Quick movement by Carolina to get it inside the 25 for the first time. Unable to sustain. So the ball will go back over to Virginia and your blueprints for the Cavaliers. Simple early passing. Virginia knows that they are going to face this quick and feisty press. Keeping things simple and passing early will help Virginia be able to move the ball up the field and play free. This team has said it all season long. They've got nothing to lose here. They believe all the pressure is on Carolina to repeat. So when they play free and are connecting, Leah, they play a really, really beautiful brand of hockey. Michelle Madison, the head coach of the Cavaliers. Hall of Famer, as well as coach of the year. Solid playing days at Rutgers and also a big part of our USA national program as well. seen a couple of lifted balls accidentally on both sides. That's nerves, Leah. That's adrenaline pumping through these athletes' veins right now. Coach Madison's team won the 2016 ACC Championship 4-2 over these same Tar Heels. Today is the ninth time that Virginia finds themselves in the championship game. When you talk about the original ACC schools, these two schools part of that mode that really, uh, quite honestly, pre-Title IX set the tone for the rest of the country on how things are done in the sport of field hockey. Right there, the winningest coach in field hockey history. Nine-time national champion and 12-time coach of the year, Karen Shelton for the Tar Heels. Here's to Chuck. Doesn't have the numbers. But good recovery and great recovery by Aaron Matson to poke that ball away from Laura Jensen. And that was a 50-yard sprint for Aaron Matson. She was in the attacking circle to come back and put pressure on that ball. Talk about some speed. Oh, goodness. And Annie McDonough goes down on the follow through of that stick. McDonough will have to leave the field. But we've seen enough of Annie McDonough to know the gritty and toughness of McDonough. She will find a way to come back. And we're going to have a bully on the spot since there was no infraction called. Up. We don't see bullies too much yeah. anymore, Suzanne. Take us through uh, the bully. Well, it's all about fast hands. And you see two very good stick skill players will go at it. 
And Boderman was really excited to take that ball. <laughs> They've got to tap the ground and tap the stick. Yes. There we go. Oh, oh. And that was uh, one of the keys of emphasis by both, by both schools yesterday, keeping your cool around the ball. Yeah, you know, emotions are going to run high. Obviously, there is a trophy on the line. We talked about pressure is off. Both of these teams secured their place in NCAA tournament, regardless of the outcome here. But, you know, you still want to raise the trophy. And so uh, with that, emotions are going to run high. The physicality is going to be ramped up. We've seen that over the tournament. It's been a much more physical tournament than we saw in the regular season. Again, as emotions increase, the physicality increases in this game. Rame Ricardo with the ball. And Sitska Bruning. Bruning with a great defensive save in the semifinal win against Syracuse. Nice denial there by Virginia. And a good job in just being patient. I think Lily Hungerer and the Cavaliers will have to show that patience today. Hinger. I thought she was going to get there. That certainly would have made things interesting. Yeah. of this squad, Megan wearing number 12. And notice Dad in the in the crowd here with his uh, 11 and 12 hat, sporting it for his two daughters. Pretty sweet. Remember her family moving to the States uh, when Lily was 10 from Ireland. And finding their way to Charlottesville to continue their education and play with one of the finest programs in the country. And here's Lily to set it in. Jansen through the double team. Nicely done. We have Lily hung her up ahead. And Akabuchi nearly slid that one through. Our officials on this championship game, Ben Peters and Ayana McLean. Congratulations to the duo. It's an honor for them as well. Two names very well respected in the officiating community. That's in. Cuts back inside. Nice sliding pass, and goodness, just a little bit too far ahead for Lisa Slinker. Leah, I love to see the aerial ball being pulled out early in this game. You saw Romeo Ricardo go ahead and throw that ball up into space. Aaron Madsen able to one touch that, get a great lead ball. Oh, nice pass up ahead to Slinker. Oh, excuse me, to Hunger. And Ricardo with just a little bit too aggressiveness on the ball, so it will go back over to the Hoos. Michelle Madison impressing upon us yesterday the importance of her team to look out. Nice recovery by Santa Ricardo uh, for her team to get off of their feet yesterday, playing back-to-back -back games. You talk about a team with a whole lot of energy and frankly, Leah, a whole lot of characters. You know, it was funny talking with Michelle Madison mid-season. She said, you know, we have one of the largest recruiting classes that we've ever had. She said, we still have nobody that can sing. That's what she was focused on. I mean, it was it was funny. You got to keep it light. They kept it so light in practice yesterday. Excited to be here today. Lots of laughs. Cavaliers have been in 12 one-goal games this season. 
record of nine and three in that span. Here's Sienna looking for some options, finds Heck down low. Flip it back in. That's a tough spot on the field. UNC gets the call, so Riley Heck will move it up to the hash and restart. And a corner call, got to play the ball, and that didn't happen on that play. Yeah, Akabuchi just went in and really hacked Riley Heck's stick there. Ben Peters going ahead and issuing the corner. Set pieces and the wrinkle. Fifth in the ACC, corners per game for the Tar Heels. But second in the production off of those corners, finishing with goals with 13. Yeah, good one-two punch now at the striker position with the addition of freshman Sitska Bruning. She's got a great sweep. Bruning and Matson flip-flop there. Set it up for Matson on the big line. The rebound is out. Slinker trying to slide it through. And they do. Nice job by Carolina in position for the rebound and the put away. It's one to nothing, Tar Heels. That was a great, great take there by Slinker. She knew the pressure was coming at her on the right-hand side. She slides that ball over to her reverse side after collecting this rebound. You see the pressure on her left-hand side. She goes ahead and takes it to her reverse side, finds the back of the cage beyond Trimborn. Slinker sixth of the year. And the Tar Heels. They have now scored in the first 10 minutes, 11 of 17 games on the season. Leah, if you don't get a goal when you're on your APC unit, when you're trying to execute a corner, that's what you want to see. You want to have those second chance, circle positive opportunities, and Slinker able to collect that rebound and find the back of the goal. Maddie Orobono, number five for UNC, playing a solid semifinal match against Syracuse defensively, really locking down that side of the field that she plays on. Sitska Bruning with the ball. Bruning, a, a very interesting story on how she landed uh, at UNC. Her first time on campus was actually to bring her clothes and her stick and get ready for school, but uh, what a late find. Yeah, Karen Shelton has been singing her praises since she got on campus. A late signee for the Tar Heels, but boy, what an impact she has made and a composure as a freshman, what she brings to the backfield has been fantastic. ACC Fall Championships continue this weekend. Men's soccer action Sunday. The quarterfinals start at 2 p.m. Eastern. All matches right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Home of all of your ACC championships. Sessa trying to do the spin move. She get a little fancy there. Nice effort defensively by Ashley Sessa, the freshman. 
Sessa such great hands. She trusts this spin move. She just kind of loses where she is with regard to the cage there. And you see the ball goes off her stick. Such quick stick skills. She, uh, she rivals Erin Madsen um, for her stick carrying ability, her ball carrying ability. Sessa with also a big offensive threat for this Carolina team that had tricked earlier this year against Michigan. This freshman squad is really taking the pressure off of the Erin Matson attack. And at one point this season, the freshman had accounted of nine of 18 first half, uh, first quarter goals. Is it just coming in? Yeah, Ashley Sessa putting on the Carolina blue uniform for the first time, her very first collegiate game, and she gets a hat trick. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. It coming in for the Cavaliers. They'll have to hurry. And actually, it'll be going out. And it'll be a long hit for Virginia. Good to see number 14, Amy McDonough, back on the field. McDonough took a follow through on a stick, had to leave the field. But there's no doubt you want to talk about one of the grittiest players that will lay it all out for you. Her heart on her sleeve is number 14 for the Hoos. She showed that against Wake Forest, getting that first goal. Wednesday, laying out, diving to get that ball. Nice job on the interception by the Cavaliers. They have time. And then just a little bit too far ahead on that play, but the ball will remain with UVA. Oh, dangerous. One quarter in the books. Three more to find out who hoists the ACC championship trophy. Lisa Slinkert giving the Tar Heels the advantage right now, one to nothing after one quarter of play. The undefeated and top seeded North Carolina Tar Heels lead it one to nothing after one quarter of play. Well, earlier this week, the individual honors for the ACC handed out and the sweep by Carolina, Aaron Matson, an unprecedented five-time player of the year. Never been done in, in any sport. In any sport. I mean, hats off to five-time player of the year, Aaron Matson. You see the sweep there and first team honors uh, for Heck Matson and Shoulder, as well as Danny Mendez Trendler and Annie McDonough from UVA and second team all ACC. Sitska Bruning, Ashley Sessa from North Carolina, and Adele Akabuchi and Yet Trimborn for the Cavaliers. And also, uh, congratulations to veteran head coach at Wake Forest, Jen Averill, being named Co-Coach of the Year with Karen Shelton. Again, with that aerial, because you've got an offensive and a defensive player in the same area, you have to give the team that did not lift that aerial ball the opportunity to make a play. You got to get five yards away from that reception. So that was Virginia's ball. Peyton Worth into the corner. Just outside the hash, so that ball needs to go. You see where there's hash and then the side of the line of the circle. So that ball needs to run five before it can go in. Good job defensively by the Hoos. See it's Gavroni. Nice quick pass. Here's Heck with the centering ball. May have gone off Sessa's foot, but no call. Carolina going to get an advantage here off of the turnover. Let's see how fast the Tar Heels can move. 
Off of the restart. Well, action out in front. Heck trying to work herself around. Nice job by Yet Trimborn. Come out and make that save. Yet also a late find and a pickup for Virginia due to a Tyler Kennedy injury around July. And again, uh, never count yourself out if you're a, a player with an interest to play at any level the college game, yet uh, sent over a tape and found herself on a plane. I see Heck here trying to slide, but yet knew exactly where, she knew Heck didn't have any room to maneuver and just cut that angle off. She's been an exceptional find for Virginia. Second team all ACC. Five shutouts on the year broken today. And here comes Peyton Worth. Tricky ball that comes into the circle. No question what Carolina is going to do, Suzanne. They want to just get anything towards the cage and let uh, everyone else get into place for a potential rebound. Well, and there's so much speed on their forward line that they trust one another to get inside the circle and getting good position quickly. And so those long balls into the circle, not only is the defense shifting, but UNC speed-wise can out-hoof most people. Cavaliers doing a nice job, just kind of following the ball, giving some separation, but not overplaying. Utilizing that sideline as an extra defender. Long hit for the Tar Heels. Carolina completing their 17th undefeated season. Here's Matson off of the rebound, held whistle. And the whistle blown just before the shot for the corner. Second corner opportunity for the Heels. Again, UNC just really, you know, as soon as they get inside the hash marks, they're sending that ball into the circle for their great creators to do something in front of Cage. Aaron Matson able to get a circle positive there, gets the corner call, their second of the game. This is a Tar Heel squad coming into this game, out shooting opponents 273 to 118, and outscoring opponents 66 to 15. 12 different scorers for UNC on the year. That's in with the big ball again, deflected. Ben Peters looking for some help. They'll repeat the corner. And if you're wondering. Ball coming up off the arm there. You know, it's great that the officials also have communication as well, as you see the goal cam. Matson, big ball, big rebound out. My goodness, couldn't have landed in a better spot. Kabuchi trying to work back inside, gets the call. Jansen now. Laura trying to get something inside the circle. That'll run all the way through to the opposite side. You know, it's, it's interesting, Leah, you know, Virginia against Wake Forest on Wednesday, they made the adjustment at halftime to stop dribbling the ball into the circle. They were getting stuffed every time. They played a really, really stout defense in Wake Forest. And so what did they do? They started getting to the hash marks, hitting the ball in and creating things. They got three tips unanswered as a result of those balls into the circle. We're seeing both teams utilize that same tactic here. We're seeing both teams, as soon as they hit the hashes, they're expecting a cherry picker inside the circle to cut on to that ball coming in. 
Corner intentionally swiped out of bounds. It's the second time that this has happened to Virginia. Madison Orsi trying to make things happen. And again, UNC with a lot of firepower at the top of their circle. We've seen straight shots so far, Leah, so I'm going to say this is their fourth corner. We're going to start to see some variations of that straight shot, some good tips, some give and goes. They've got a lot of tools in their toolbox. Great shot of number one, Matson as a striker, and Sitska Bruning. Number 17. Bruning with the sweep. And it's up into the defender. So that would be a hit coming out. She nailed Riley Heck pretty good there. Ball lifted just a smidge. Both these teams brought in a crop of freshmen, Suzanne. And, you know, sometimes you never know how that's going to go, right? And how they're going to contribute. Well, and, and you look at players like Ashley Sessa and Riley Heck. I mean, these players were essentially recruited to replace Aaron Matson, But to have the ability to play with players like Meredith Shoulder, like Aaron Matson, and that's just icing on the cake. And then on the flip side, the same with Virginia to be able to play with players like Annie McDonough and Adele Akabuchi. I mean, it's it's a, it's an incredible experience to have talent on both ends of the spectrum and, and build that foundation and actually elevate that foundation even more because of those fifth year and sixth year super seniors. First team all ACC. Trying to run that ball into Meredith's shoulder and try to push for that corner to be called. Dunna also named to the senior all-star game. That'll be played on the Saturday of championship weekend in Storrs, Connecticut. Quite an honor for the 30 plus players selected to the squad. Yeah, it's always a fun game. It, you know, it, it allows the seniors to put on their school colors one more time and go out and have a little fun. Ball will stay with Virginia. Work a little bit quicker here, and allow UNC to match up. Figure racing upfield, hoping that Shoulder could get her that big ball on the opposite side of the 25. But solid defense by the Hoos, slowing down the pace. That's his follow through, a bit too aggressive, and it will go back to Virginia. The mantra yesterday for the Cavaliers, difficult is hard. Possible is a little harder. And the response was interesting from one of the players, Suzanne. Adele Akabuchi with, listen here, coach. Nothing's impossible. We got this. 
Tomasi for the Tar Heels. Center and ball goes up off of Virginia, not once, but twice and a third time. So that will be just outside the circle off of Akabuchi and side in for Virginia. that good, simple, early passing. You saw a good transition there from side to side from Virginia. Saturday morning, 11 Eastern, the ACC huddle cruise in Raleigh, North Carolina. Full day of college football action right up to 6.30 p.m. where they'll have a complete wrap-up of the day's games, lead you into the primetime matchup between Wake Forest and NC State on the ACC Network at 8 p.m. All games, all day long, follow it along, college football, ACC Network and the ESPN app. Chuck getting her feet around, but that was off of uh, Rome Ricardo's feet, so it'll come back out for Virginia. We look quicker with those balls. Virginia wanting to, to hit quickly here against Carolina and not allow them to set up. Nice interception by Sienna Ricardo. Matson looking at her options, letting everyone settle in. But you saw the overlap there. There were actually four other players when Matson received the ball who were all sprinting downfield to get in a good position. UNC's off-ball movement, Leah, in my opinion, is, is unrivaled um, in the country. Yeah, great, great point, Suzanne, especially for our younger viewers who are trying to learn the game at home uh, and watching here. Don't necessarily watch what's going on on the ball with these two teams, but watch the players off the ball, trying to set themselves in position to receive and be at the receiving end. Returning for Virginia, number 15, Laura Jensen. Let's go, right! All on number 25, Noah Botterman. Don't go too far away at the half. Suzanne and I will be taking a look at some of the top teams around the country and talk about big picture with the NCAA championships coming up and we have the good fortune of being with you folks championship weekend up in stores Connecticut as well as taking a look at some of these great first half highlights and Aaron Matson trying to be a part of that highlight reel she hasn't missed too many of those highlight reels in her five-year career well, and Riley Heck right here, eliminating two defenders. She splits them. Look, she's got three different people on her, but is still able to slip that ball through. Aaron Matson gets a good look and a rare miss for number one. Nice job, recovery by Noah Boderman. Boderman working herself into a clean space. Under 90 seconds to go. One minute to go in the second quarter. Do the Heels have one more rush? Matson trying to lead it in. She's got Peyton Worth. Slip to heck. Oh! And Akabuchi is there. And with that, we are going to have our first review. Yes, Ben, I can hear you. Rich Bear in the official's review. box this afternoon for the official review. UNC is looking for a foot inside the circle against Virginia for a penalty corner. Okay, I'll check that for you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, Leah Riley Heck immediately calling for the corner. You saw her bouncing up and down, looking at Ben Peters, waiting for the call. Great lead ball there. It did look like it went off Jan Kroon's right foot. Ben, I have a decision for you. It did hit the foot of the defender. You can award a penalty corner and they keep the referral. Again, Heck looking to slip that ball. Peyton Worth looking to slip that ball back. Jan Kroon's foot. Penalty corner, Tar Heels. After review, the call is overturned. North Carolina keeps its referral. Carolina 16 times in the circle. Corner for North Carolina. This is their fifth corner opportunity. Off of eight shots. See what kind of wrinkle Karen Shelton has. Worth will go down and take the insert. She was at the top of the circle for a second there. Tomasi keep an eye on as well. Off ball. And Katie Dixon, 14. A little bit too soon was Virginia. Out of over the line. So we'll repeat. No, it just That's in, a little slip to Bruning. Tipped in for the goal. Nice job. Patience by the Tar Heels. And they're up 2-0. Yeah, we talked yes, about. Like it came off of a defender's foot, but with that, Virginia asking for a review. So with 34 seconds left, hold on here. Ridge Bear will take a look at it. Cavaliers feeling as though there was an obstruction getting to that ball. And if there was, it will be a hit coming out. So you saw Riley Heck right there in front. If she obstructs or similar to in basketball, sets a pick. I did not see an obstruction call there. Didn't see an obstruction on any of those defensive players running out, but that's why we're taking a look at it now. And Ridge Bear gets to look at it. Slowed way down. <laughs> Riley Heck comes ben, in. The player is too far away for obstruction, so you can stick with your original decision. They lose the referral. No obstruction on the play. You hear Ridge Bear making the call quite quickly. So the goal will stand. UVA will lose the referral and now find themselves down two goals. And Riley Heck does, in fact, get a stick on that ball. Again, she puts herself in great position. Sitska Bruning on the assist uh, with a tremendous shot from the top. Nice little flip there by Aaron Matson as well.
hours of championship hockey in the books. And the Tar Heels, 13-0, win leading at the half. Teams head to the locker room with the Tar Heels up 2-0. Yeah, you know, North Carolina able to get two goals. They're outscoring opponents 38 to six coming into today's game, going into the locker room at halftime. This is a first half team, and now it's time to defend. They've given up, it's been their Achilles heel this season, given up some goals in the fourth quarter. So it'll be interesting because Virginia, they're not gonna give up. They make some great adjustments moving into second halves. The Tar Heels trying to keep their dominance in the ACC championship alive. Two-goal lead at the half, right here on the ACC Network. Tar Heels with possession here, trying to lock down Virginia deep in their own area. to start this third quarter of play. Suzanne, any, anything glared out to you uh, with the opportunities or lack thereof uh, by Virginia first? Or? You know, I feel like, again, Virginia had some good buildup. They had some good outletting. They made some good energy. You know, they took some good energy into their attacking third. However, UNC's defense has come up, you know, they're just tackling back. They are a feisty press. And so because of that, they're coming up with turnovers, you know, right in the attacking third for Virginia. So Virginia's got to be a little craftier in how they penetrate the circle and how they attack their, their attacking third. But I'm sure Michelle Madison and uh, staff has cooked up something fun um, for this second half. They're a great team that can make good adjustments moving into the second half of the games. Big through ball by Aaron Matson that Riley Heck was toe for toe with Madison Orsi to chase down that ball. And so it'll be a hit coming out. Two balls on the field. I go, I go, I go. You can just see that the press is relentless that UNC puts on you. Certainly layers on that press and trying to ease off some of that pressure. Great job tactically by Tachuk to play that one down and get this ball into that circle area of play. And I like the take there by Jansen. It was great vision by Tachuk to look 45 degrees to her left to be able to connect with Laura Jansen and she did make a good take. She takes the majority of the shots for Virginia. She just didn't get a whole lot of mustard on that push. Prune. And nicely done, intercepted. A little slice pass ahead by Yasmina Smolinar's quick action. It goes right back as it peppers back and forth between each team. Should be a long hit. And it will be is Sitska Bruning and into the game as they have done all season, Suzanne, is Kylie Walbert. Yeah, you know, Kylie Walbert, the, really the only difference between these two goalies, you look at their stats, they're so similar. But Kylie Walbert, the more vocal of the two goalkeepers and has really helped Abigail Taylor open up in that communication piece. But since day one, Karen Shelton has never deterred from her original game plan. She has said they will split time. And both goalkeepers, honestly, Leah, I, what a great, it's not even a problem. What, what a great um, you know, thing to have two goalkeepers with equal experience going into postseason play. Absolutely. Walbert, the freshman out of Leesburg, Virginia, and Abigail Taylor, nearby sophomore from Cary, North Carolina. And just pushing each other along to greatness. You know, you've got to be uncomfortable to be comfortable and make that next move to be really great at what you do. And these two young ladies have certainly done that all season long. Eight shutouts combined this season. Here we go. Give time, give time. 
Good connection of passes and patience. Yeah, just simple early passing on that transfer from sideline to sideline. And then outletting up the field. Madsen finds Smolinars in the spine. She takes it back out to the outside. That was a great read there by yeah. Lindsay Dickinson. She's a transfer from UConn. She's a player that we don't say a whole lot. She does the non-glams and just gets things done, you know, flies under the radar and does a lot. You know, Coach was talking about um, the player's load and how Lindsay is all over the field. She always is the player that has the most load, that is running the most miles each game. Uh, you'll see her on defense, you'll see her on offense, and she's a big integral part of why Virginia is seeing success this season. Absolutely, and you mentioned her time at UConn where she played four years and 75 games, had three defensive saves in her career and a part of the U.S. U-21 team that picked up a bronze at the Junior Pan Ams. Look out, that ball's in the circle. Play down and out. Saturday, week 10 of college football, the lineup on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Number 17, Carolina heads to Charlottesville to take on Virginia. That's at noon. 20th ranked Syracuse heads to Pittsburgh, take on the Panthers. And then the primetime matchup on the ACC Network, number 21, Wake Forest, taking on number 22, NC State. Full day of college football for you right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Oh, nice ball to Matson. Can she work it quickly? Denied by Virginia's defense. And quick movement out as Laura Jansen was trying to find some space. Got the call on the backside push. That was a great ball into the circle, but you got to give props to Madison Orsi. She anticipated that cross ball so well, was in the perfect spot to make sure that she came up with that interception. strength of this Carolina defense. We talked about they have shut out Virginia thus far with now just one shot. Allowing just three goals in the last six games. Well, that's just lockdown defense. Taylor and Walbert have done their job with their defense ahead of them. Leading the ACC in goals against average at one and two, and two and three in save percentage, respectively. Crafty hands by Matson as she sends it across to Tomasi. Cliggett is there trying to work herself into position on the near post now. 
That's such a great aerial ball into space. You saw Erin Madsen under pressure, gets herself out from under pressure, gets her feet around, and is able to lift that ball at a 45-degree angle to her right. Virginia going back to back days in this 2022 ACC championship. Defeating Louisville one to nothing and Wake in overtime. What a great, that was probably one of the best games that we've witnessed all year. The prettiness of of those three goals by Virginia. And the Cavaliers, do they look refreshed to you with the day off? Yeah, you know, they don't seem like their legs look heavy yet. A again, they've they've got just as deep of a bench as UNC has and, and just as much talent. So, you know, we've seen a lot of substitutions um, for both both teams. Um, so they're they're able to get fresh legs on the field. Um, you see the squad right there. I mean, that's Virginia's squad. They they both teams rolled in deep. We looked at the field during warmups. We're like, wow, there's football teams on both sides here. <laughs> Matson's got Cliggett ahead. Trying to get in position to take that shot and a nice job and coming over defensively once again is Madison Orsi, the freshman. It started uh, since Penn State opening weekend and uh, been solid in the back. So funny story about Madison Orsi. Michelle Madison told her just to get under her skin that she would not start until her junior year, but also <laughs> refers to Madison Orsi as a silent killer. And a hard whistle here. And this is more so some preventive officiating by Ayanna McLean to Megan Hunger. Both players just going hard into the ball. Yeah. Cliggett, oh, trying to do a little 3D action there. Broken up nicely on the play. Emily Field has also been really solid for Michelle Madison all season long. Part of that back line also on the defensive unit on the corners. Well, and that just goes to show the depth, right? Madison Orsi, a freshman. Emily Field, just a sophomore. Jan Kroon, just a sophomore. This is a young backfield. Eight freshmen who have bought in again to exactly what Michelle Madison is trying to accomplish at UVA. Been successful every step that she has gone into different programs around the country rebuilding. Has been the pulse certainly for the last 17 years of her 34 years of coaching in Charlottesville. A very special ACC PM today with the crew in Raleigh. Get you set for the big weekend of college football. And they'll also have the latest news and notes from around the ACC right after our championship game here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Under two to go here in the third quarter of play. Worth trying to come up with a big ball and on the follow through caught Madison Orsi there. Off 
Automatic bid to the NCAAs. Mary, the championship trophy this afternoon for either one of these teams. Certainly both will be headed to the next chapter of the season. Under a minute to go. Cavaliers trying to connect on their passing for one more string, have the call. Here's Jansen, she's got a little bit of room, has Akabuchi ahead. And Hungerer as well. And on the play, it will stay with UVA. They're gonna center the ball just a little bit more parallel to where it went out. This is where UVA needs to go ahead and draw a corner. They need to get some circle positives, get some numbers up, because you see the press from UNC is absolutely stifling them from outside the circle. That is what Virginia needed right there. First opportunity on a corner for UVA with 17 seconds remaining. And with that, Virginia getting the corner. UNC yes, wanting to take you. a look at it. Okay, so we're looking for the correct placement of the ball on the free hit. Ben. Okay, I'll check that for you. So leading into the play that the corner was called is what UNC is questioning. You try to be quick, right? You don't want the defense to look. Well, you want, yeah, Set up. You want to take the free hit as soon as possible. The longer you take, the more the defense has the ability to set up their press and their defense. there by Peyton Worth and where Jansen took that ball from. Definitely looked like there was an advantage there from where the infraction was. In fact, Circle penetrations by the Cavaliers five times now. And this would be their first, would be their first corner opportunity, which is what uh, UNC is now questioning. Taking a lot longer to review, which leads us to believe that it's not all cut and dry on the call. Hey, Ben, can you hear me? All right, so it was not from the correct spot, so it'll be a free hit coming out, and they'll retain the referral. Huge break for UNC. Michelle Madison cannot believe it, but at the same time, Leah, you saw the review. You saw where Jansen restarted the ball from. It was about three or four yards in front of where the in front. Michelle Madison cannot believe it, but at the same time, Leah, you saw the review. You saw where Jansen restarted the ball from. It was about three or four yards in front of where the infraction occurred. And so that is what UNC wanted to review. They, in fact, are correct. And so it'll be UNC ball coming out. UNC keeps the referral, 17 seconds left. Let's see if Matty Orobona goes for the big ball or if they'll just play it down. And they will into the corner. Let the time wind down here in this third quarter of play. Wow, what a turn of events. An opportunity lost for the Cavaliers. 15 minutes till we crown a champion here in the ACC. Come on back. 
for the fourth quarter after these messages. Jim Phillips, the commissioner of the ACC, in the crowd today taking on this great play of field hockey between Virginia and Carolina. Busy man these days with all of the championships going on. Yeah, he's been making his rounds, and he'll go from here over to Cary, where the women's soccer tournament is being held. And you talk about some thrillers <laughs> last night. Two of the games, both the games going into PKs. It's a late night for that crew. Great action on the yes. ACC Network and the ESPN app. And we had an opportunity to chat with Commissioner Phillips prior to the game and uh, what he has done with the ACC Conference in the short period of time he has been here is quite inspiring. Fourth quarter. Cavaliers with some work to be done. But never say never, right? This is where they found themselves against Wake Forest uh, just a few days ago. Yeah, such a gritty win. So we're going to see them just pull out all the stops. You know, they always said they want to get down and dirty in the 30. So we'll see. Kind of, I, I bet we're going to start seeing some bodies fly in orange uh, on, on their attacking third, you know. But UVA with a season low heading into the fourth quarter on shots. Just one, not on cage, no corners. You know, you got to give hats off to UNC's defense. However, the Virginia midfield just hasn't connected right. with their forward line the way they have in other games. So... You know, that's something that we're going to need to watch. And if you start to see bodies flying, that's why. It's just to get your teammate revved up if you're Virginia. Virginia, all four of their championship goals throughout this tournament have come in the open field. They haven't scored one on a corner. So, you know, while they haven't had a quarter opportunity, it has come in other ways. Yeah, and again, making that adjustment against Wake Forest, just getting to the hashes and hitting the ball in, getting tips. I mean, it's kind of a Hail Mary when it comes to field hockey. It's not what you want to hang your hat on. Um, they got lucky on three beautiful, beautiful goals and beautiful tips. Um, but again, this press of UNC, it's feisty and it's, it's relentless and so, you know, that's where the open field isn't as easy as it might be against a Wake Forest. And UNC doing a really good job just pressing together. That was something that when we talked to the players after the game yesterday, they said, goodness, there's a wide open shot and the goal. Annie McDonough is there for the put away and the first team all ACC bring this game to one. Well, we just talked about struggling with the open field. I think Annie McDonough was even surprised that that ball dribbled out in front of her. Getting past goalkeeper and a defender. And she collects that ball, turns her feet, finds the back of the cage. And it's a one goal game now, Leah. Annie McDonough working hard. So that makes the fifth goal of this championship series in the open field for the Cavaliers. Two to one with 12.20 to go in this game. If you're going to get a shot on cage, might as well be a goal. Right. Corner called quickly. Nice job by Riley Heck to push that ball into the defender to get that call. Corner success rate for the Tar Heels. That has been solid for them. Yeah, just great execution there. You saw the patience of Sitska Bruning on her sweep finds Riley Heck. And again, Bruning with the sweep to Heck. Great shot of Maddie Urbono up top. 
as a, one of the stoppers. Hard shot, deflected out, should be a long hit it is. For UNC. They want to take, Matson wants to take a look at it. She feels it went off of a body part and should be a corner. Yes, Ayana, I can hear you. Interesting to watch Aaron Matson's eyes kind of scanning the circle where the defense is as they set up. Trying to run everything through her mind right now. Yet Trimborn. One last chat with the defense. Bruning. A little side. Now, oh, Ashley Sessa going up top. A little too far. Well, and I like the call there. You actually saw Virginia defense. It, it was kind of a, a, a variation of a high box with two higher flies there. See, that just misses high, but I like the uh, idea there from UNC to really get out in a round the defense of Virginia. Cavaliers committing and off the turnover. Fall championships continue this weekend. Men's soccer quarterfinals start at 2 p.m. All matches on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Your home of all the ACC championships. Come on, get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up there, Melanie. The McDonough oh. staying with it. Quick restart. For the Hoos. Megan Hunger trying to make a big ball happen as well. Be a long hit for Virginia. Yeah, Hunger needs to look more far post on that. Going close post just isn't going to do it. Virginia overloading on that left hand side for somebody to come in and tip. So Hanger, if you're gonna hit that long ball coming in, you really have to extend the cage, hit that far post for a tipper to come in and redirect. The 
returning for North Carolina, number 14, Katie Dixon. And number 36, Kennedy Cleggins. Running. To shoulder. And across. And a nice job in breaking up the play is Megan Hunger. Tar Heels trying to do a little bit of clock management as well as we are in the single digits here with 8.30 to go in this game. Well, we saw North Carolina do this quite a bit in practice yesterday, just transfer the ball back and forth in their backfield. Peyton Worth on that backhand. Long rebound out. So long that her shoulder is able to pick it up. <laughs> nice stretch there by Sienna Ricardo. And back in it goes Dixon and off of a, actually it was a um, obstruction. So it will come back out. Yet Trimborn with a great clear there off her right or the left kicker. Matson spins back inside. Was it enough for the call? It was. Set piece action. For the heels, they're seventh. That's just a great off ball cut there by Matson. Finds the space, gets the corner. Check that, that's number eight. Here we go, Let's go, We're inserting for the Tar Heels. Worth to insert. Bruning. And a corner. Coming up off of a UVA body. North Carolina corner. Matson working her way in. Bruning trying to find the space, the backhander, the rebound to shoulder. Solid defensive effort for the hold by the Cavaliers. Yet Trimborn coming up big again. It's a pair of saves here. And well defended by UVA as well. There was a melee in front of Yet Trimborn, which is tough when you're a goalkeeper and you've got so many players in front of you impeding your vision. She did a good job, kept her cool, and UVA kept the ball in front of them to prevent another corner for UNC. Our first card of the game. Kristen Tomasi will pick up the green and give it the Cavaliers. Well, this is a little deja vu. <laughs> Except it's on the reverse side for the Cavaliers. Now they kind of don't have to worry about pulling their goalkeeper so quickly and a corner called. So pretty good flurry of scenarios here for Virginia. 
it's that it's about that biological time when you start thinking about adding that extra field player and advantage. UVA with their first corner of the game. Virginia really utilizes both their players' forehands and backhands. The stick stop will usually be in Goosejins and Boderman, and you never know who's actually going to get that ball, whether they're going to take it on their forehand or backhand. A lot of striker weapons for Virginia on their APC unit. Keep an eye on to Chuck, 27. Boderman, 25. Keep Boderman there. Rebound out. Before that uh, shot there, though, the corner called again. Hey, who got Virginia right away? Same corner. Kieran Shelton telling us after the victory over Syracuse and many of the players, actually, that was the toughest game that they had had all year in their victory against Syracuse. Yeah, Syracuse and Ange Bradley able to pick apart presses. It's a great game. Boderman on the backhand. Loose ball out in front. Swipe that by Tuchuk. A little bit dangerous. Unfortunately, Virginia not having an opportunity to provide a review call. Katie Dixon. feel the energy coming off Virginia right now. They know they're a woman up. They know they've got the momentum this last few minutes. It's only a one goal game. They did it against Wake, looking to do it again against UNC. Nice slow down there by Ashley Sessa is Yet Trimborn keeping an eye on the sideline. Sliding up towards the top of the circle is she inevitably will come out here at some point. The player advantage to UNC and they will not be in any rush at all to take this hit. Chuck trying to really overplay. Carol, uh, excuse me, Virginia has to make the overplay here. Try to make something happen. That could loosen up things for the forward line for North Carolina as we are now at full strength. Dixon running it up to Sessa. And a nice job by Emily Field to break that ball up. Emily Field has had a great game. Tall order facing Ashley Sesso, who normally plays that left midi position for Carolina. And Emily Field has handled it with flying colors. The positioning of the ball on the field right now is not advantageous at all for Virginia to be able to add that extra field player because here come the Tar Heels into the circle. And the run of the goal and Riley Heck with the put away as she held on to that ball for the very, very, very last second and the insurance for the Tar Heels now with 3.03 to go. Yet Trimborn really coming out high, Riley Heck Looking to send that ball back at an angle. Able to find a foot of a defender and actually goes ahead and it deflects into the cage. But yet Trimborn coming off of her angle. You saw her slide out and a small mistake there from the freshman keeper. Third goal of the tournament for Heck. She has now had a point in seven of the last nine games for UNC. Her second of the day. Siska Bruning going down 
holding the back of her calf. Stings just for a minute. Got to walk it off. Chuck's goal against Wake to send it into overtime was with just 90 seconds left on the clock. Carolina going to run some time off the clock here. Bruning doing all that she can do. And letting Maddie Orbono take that hit back to the Cavaliers. McDonough has one goal already. Ball out just outside the circle. Cavaliers need a hurry. Under two. And a quarter. That'll stop the clock. Ever so important right now for Virginia. Second quarter of the game. I think Annie McDonough, part of the indoor national team, and showcasing her skills. You think about indoor play, and you really have to have spot on stick skills, and she was able to do just that. She was so smart, so composed, gets the corner call for UVA, and Leah, we are in a very, very similar position to where we were. Absolutely. Feel the momentum here for Virginia. So keep an eye out for Adele Akabuchi. Usually from this far side, you're going to see Adele Akabuchi get involved. Gushin. And it's slided. Guess what happened? Laura Jansen with the goal. And it's 3 to 2 with 135 to go. Yet Trimborn will be pulled. You talk about picture perfect execution. Laura Jansen in the perfect spot to redirect behind keeper. That was an absolutely beautifully executed corner. Do we have deja vu? <laughs> Could possibly be in the semifinals. Virginia with three unanswered goals to Chuck. Got the crowd on their feet. Akabuchi in overtime. Getting three to two, huh? Getting down and dirty in the 30. Three unanswered goals to get Virginia to this final game. North Carolina just trying to get some players ahead. You saw Karen Shelton say, just throw that ball quickly downfield. <laughs> Cavaliers. As that ball was tipped off of Carolina, and McDonough will get the side and going quickly off the restart. Ashley Sessa trying to spin out of the attack. Nice little slowdown there by Emily Field. Under a minute to go. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to get an aerial ball here, try and pin it down in a corner. Far away from the Carolina defensive goal cage.
crowd starting to feel it. Twenty seconds. Movement of the ball was not put in the spot of where that infraction was. Clock will restart. And that should do it. North Carolina, an unprecedented sixth consecutive ACC championship. 3-2 over Virginia. Effort was almost there by Virginia. Great effort by the Cavaliers and the Tar Heels hoisting the trophy. Yeah, you can never count out Virginia. Came back from a 2-0 deficit at the half, able to put one in the back of the cage and just battled back and forth. But ultimately, UNC's firepower, 18 shots to Virginia's five, 10 corners to Virginia's three. They just couldn't overcome, again, the offensive prowess that UNC possesses. Automatic bids will still be there for Virginia as they await. Carolina has punched their ticket with the automatic bid as the ACC champion now joining Princeton to continue to fill out that portion of the next chapter of the NCAA tournament. We will be back with the champions in a celebration after these messages. North Carolina, your champion three to two, the 2022 ACC Field Hockey Championship. starts for the North Carolina Tar Heels. It never gets old in Tar Heel country. Three to two today over Virginia. And joining us now, legendary head coach of the Tar Heels, Karen Shelton. And coach, a uh, sixth time consecutive, your team has won this precedented ACC championship. Very special, this group, in its own way? Very special group. Uh, I've enjoyed them all season long. They're very mature and hardworking. They understand the game. And you know, we're not perfect um, by any means. And uh, you know, but it's been fun. No drama on the team, as I've mentioned earlier. They're hardworking kids. So staying undefeated, coach. Moving in to first and second rounds. Surely you guys are going to get a hosting bid. What did you see from your team today that you're really excited about moving into NCAA's? Well, it was a chess match, and, and, you know, Virginia is so good and so dangerous. You know, we knew they were coming. It was just a matter of when. Uh, so hats off to them for making it really tight at the end and putting all kinds of pressure. They're a dangerous team, you know, and they're, they're going to get in, and they're going to they're gonna be a tough draw for anybody. So uh, I'm proud of our kids. It, it was We had to be patient at times, uh, and then they made some things happen. So, uh, you know, I'm proud of our group. I thought... Uh, I thought it was a good effort and, and a great preparation for that first and second round. Coach, uh, as uh, we started to get down towards the single digits of the game, you could kind of feel what was happening in the semifinals for Virginia it, the other day. Yeah. Uh, were, were you feeling that too? And, and what were you kind of saying to your staff and the players to kind of keep everyone on even keel? Well, you know, just sit, stay with our, our game plan, really, which is to control the ball and move it around. You know, I think I think we were a little bit hesitant in the backfield, like we going into the fourth quarter. We wanted to pass it around. Well, we kept passing it back and back and back, and, you know, and they, and they were able to, you know, pin us in. So it, it kind of was my fault. I, I told them to take care of the ball, and they, they took, took it back. Uh, um, so we'll work on that going forward, yes. but, uh, but credit Virginia. I mean, that they really are a dangerous team. All righty, Coach, congratulations once again. We'll see you down the road. Okay. And then go enjoy this one with your team. Thank you so much. Karen Both Shelton, the head coach, coach thanks. of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Let's take a look at the path 
back to this championship game for Carolina. Yeah, you know, Syracuse, again, was a tough match for Carolina. They squeaked away with that win, 2-1, executing again on a beautiful corner off the tip from Bruning to Heck. We saw that again today, successful against Virginia. And, you know, back-to-back -back wins, staying undefeated, moving in to NCAAs. Get to the championship game, and Aaron Matson gets it going once again. Nice job by Carolina to get that first goal. Slinkert there for the rebound. That made it one to nothing. Did a great job on their penalty corners today. Set yeah. pieces. Yeah, I mean, you see a very similar corner play, just a dish off and an extra touch there to Sitska Bruning for the sweep again. Riley Heck with great hands, great soft hands in front of the goalkeeper. And again, Riley Heck with another goal there. Able to drive the baseline and you know, UNC, they just did a really good job executing when they had the opportunities and taking advantage when they had it. Five-time player of the year, Aaron Matson now joining us. Aaron, congratulations. Doesn't get old, does it? Thank you. No, <laughs> five feet has a nice ring to it. Um, and now, the, you know, the, the certain classes who got the COVID year have a five years to do it again. So let's hope they can do that. But, yeah, staying present, but really enjoying everything that's going on. Congrats, Aaron. So, all right, next week, you guys are going to host... What are you most excited about this team and what they bring into the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think playing at home is awesome. We missed it, even though this was pretty much, you know, right down the road. Um, there's nothing like Karen Shelton Stadium, so we're looking forward to being back in the town of Chapel Hill with our whole support network, even though we got a lot of people over today. Um, the team's looking good. We're connecting well. Um, we have a lot of speed and um, at the same time, a lot of patience and poise and everything. So it's just all about making sure it clicks on game day, um, staying present, like I just said. You know, we take it one quarter at a time, not even one a game at a time anymore. Um, making sure that we're not getting ahead of ourselves, just playing to our strengths. And uh, we have threats all over the field. Every team does. We respect everyone, but we know we got a target on our back, and, and we appreciate that. Uh, Aaron, as it applies to this game today, um, the compliment of Riley Heck with you on that forward line uh, with Peyton and the others and, and just how that has been so effective this season for you? Yeah, Riley's a star. She's going to have an awesome career ahead of her. Um, she meshed right in on day one preseason. Um, everybody's working well off of each other, whether that's with passing, movement, communication, everything. Um, Riley fit right in. She's She's gotten a, a killer mentality in the circle. She's got the skill. Um, she's got the game IQ. So it's really fun playing with her. Well, she's lucky to have you for an extra season here to play with. All right, so next week, what are you thinking? Um, Honestly, right now, I'm just looking forward to getting over with them and celebrating with our fans. Yeah. Um, we're going to celebrate tonight, you know, feel good about the game, be together, have a good tailgate, everything. Tomorrow morning, we'll look at the film and, and turn our sights to whoever we face on Friday at home. Um, but right now, again, enjoying the moment. I don't have too many left this entire senior class. That's you know, right. it, time's <laughs> ticking, so we're trying to just appreciate every little thing. Um, but, yeah, it was a great, great team effort. We played like a team. We, we've been playing like a team. So I'm really proud of the whole girl, all the girls, the whole coaching staff, everyone. Um, and, yeah, we're, we'll enjoy the moment tonight and everything and then get back to work tomorrow morning. Aaron, it's been a pleasure. Go enjoy this one with the fans, friends, family, <laughs> everyone that is around you right now. Appreciate Thank you so time. much. Thanks, guys. Congrats, Aaron. Good luck. Aaron Matson, the five-time player of the year. Some of your final thoughts uh, on this great championship. Oh, this was a battle. Again, UNC showing their grit and their ability to hang with anyone. Obviously, UNC putting up big offensive numbers. They stay undefeated on this season. They executed their press and their game plan to a T, coming out with the win, moving into NCAAs. We like to thank everyone involved, uh, including the great folks here at Duke University who have set us up all season long uh, to this leading up to this championship. The SIDs from around the ACC as well. For our entire crew here in Durham, my colleague Suzanne Bush, it's been so much fun. I'm Leah Secondo saying so long from Durham. Once again, the final score, three to two. Coming up next, ACC PM Live from NC State. To watch this entire game on a replay, you can catch it all on the ACC Network after you download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Congratulations, UNC.